um, and first item on the agenda is the budget. Yeah, so I mean, there's there was one slight change, and part of it, that slight change was um, underneath the contracted services. We did reduce that down from one hundred thousand five hundred down to seventy, and what that's under operations and building, and so it's on page ten of eleven. This is what Andrew had raised his hand asking a question about. Um, so what is budgeted in that seventy? is to do finish doing trim painting for on the buildings okay. that's something that we had budgeted for last year we were able to do some of it this past summer at south worldson i don't know if you know this but we we painted the front doors in south worldson and all the trim in the front of the building still a lot of trim to be done at the royalty campus and then we did receive a quote at the Bethel campus for last summer and the trim there was going to cost forty five thousand. so the big chunk of that 70 is going to be essentially to cover the rest of the paint that um, that we have, that we haven't been able to tackle over the last several years. And so, also, others, those are the biggest two money value jobs. Though. And like I said, the quote to do Bethel, all the trim in the front. Um, Part underneath the windows at Bethel campus, and I don't know if you can picture is the white underneath all the front windows is in need of some pretty intensive work there, too. And in the back, I actually think there's going to be some crap that I've got to replace because it has not been. But we were able to dial that in over more. So that's the decrease that you see from last week's. Okay. That was the, the adjustment there. Did we make any other adjustments? Um, that was the prior. That was the prior. That's right. Sorry, that was the 10th. Sorry. Yep. Okay, does anybody have any other questions about the budget? I mean, I would say we we didn't decrease anything in here from this year to next year. Um, and you know, with that 12% increase in health insurance and negotiated raises, I feel yeah, if you said to me, how do you feel? The fact that we're at just over 4% compared to where some of my other colleagues are seeing their budgets right now, I feel really good about it. Peggy. Yeah, Peggy. Um, I guess my question was just to finalize exactly what is the tax rate increase in Bethel and in Royalton compared to last year. So if you go to the, do you have your packet, Peggy? No, I don't have it in front okay, of me. Okay, so we'll have Ray put the tax on. sheet up on the screen and I'll go over that with you. Yeah, just, just to get it finalized because everybody yep. was saying one cent and three cents, but yet it looked like more to me. So that's why I was confused. Yep. So when we're looking at the tax sheet, we'll start right up at the top. So the current expenditure budget is $12,968,515. We bid back out from that your offsetting revenue of $1,300,516. So that gets you your Act 68 education spending of $11,667,999. We divide that by the equalized pupil of 566.94. And that gives us the education spending per pupil cost of $20,508.66. We then take that number and we divide it by the yield, which is $15,479. And that gives us the equalized residential tax rate of 1.3296, which is a reduction of 12.7 cents over the current tax rate. So from there, we go to each of the individual towns. So in Bethel, we start with the equalized tax rate of 1.3296. We divide that by your common level of appraisal, which is 88.40, a reduction of 8.84 percentage points from the current. And that gives you your FY24 homestead actual tax rate of 1.5041. 
and then we back that out from your current tax rate, and it's an increase of 0.0048 in Bethel. Non-residential, yep, half a cent. Non-residential tax rate is up 0 0.0603, so six cents in the non-residential tax rate. In Royalton, again, we start at that 1.3296, Divide that by the CLA of 85.44%, which is a reduction of 9.9 .9 percentage points. And that gives you an equalized tax rate of 1.5562, which is an increase of 0 0.0270 or 2.7 cents in Royalton. And then the non-residential in Royalton is up 8.45 cents. And you do the same thing with a non-residential rate. You take the non-residential rate and you divide it by your CLA and that's how you get your, the state's non-residential rate divided by your CLA and that's how you get your non-residential rate. Right, we don't, our budget does not control the non-residential rate. Nope, that's all done by the state. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions regarding the budget? I think, well, again, the, being my first year, I've been kind of just going with it and soaking up information, but just kind of some of the knowledge that I've gained through this experience and some of the people that I talked to on the state level, because I, I was at a meeting a week and a half ago where there were two um, uh, secretary of departments that were there, so kind of asking them how things are looking in Montpelier, right? And, and so other than the transportation budget, which, you know, there's a new T-bill that they're trying to find their matching funds for because they have plenty of fed funding for it all the other departments at least from what i gather starting next year are going to be looking to try to fill holes because the fed money is going to start running out after this budget season so <clears throat> it sounds like that it sounds weird but you know it looks like we're if, if we don't make any hard decisions in this budget we're going to have to make some going forward or the tax rate's going to go high uh, because you're going to see a lot of these programs that we have funded with that money that gets passed down to the state and into the SU is going to dry up. So well, guess, we've added a bunch of those in here. Right. I remember. So I guess I'm just, you know, just concerned on that. I mean, I, you're not carrying any positions next year that are fully funded by SU. Yeah. Just so we're yeah. clear with mm -hmm. your board. Yeah. Like I the mean, pathways and things have been built into mm -hmm. this. But well, you're going to see a lot of things like, you know, like, there's an opportunity, no, there's you're going to see the equalized, yeah. even though people already went up a thousand this year, you can see that get changed drastically. Yeah. Your, you know, your bond yield, your yields and stuff like that can change. Um, both towns are going through a, a CLA issue. I know Bethel is going to be going through the reappraisal process starting next summer. Um, so that's a year and a half process. I don't know if Relton started that, but because the CLAs are, you know, out of whack right now. So I mean, there's a lot of things that are there's against us. Right yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess not like getting into the, the all the departments because i've just been kind of soaking that information on on a big level i guess the concern i have is again having the 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 valleys and and you know hills on our budget instead of a nice slope and i think well, i think that's one of the reasons why we're trying to you know both this year and last year trying to put as much money in those reserve funds as we could so that then you know we can at least not try not to touch the educational portions but you know use some of that money to offset some of the so you would start reviewing those line items right. if we have capital project funds left. And you know, that's one way we can smooth things out. Plus, you know, if we we do still have some extra money coming for next or this upcoming budget. Um, so if we can get more and more surplus this upcoming year, then use that to pay down, you know, use that money to, uh, to even things out. That's another way that that I'm trying to get. That's kind of what I was talking about with the uh, when I brought mm -hmm. up last time. The revenue. The revenue. Oh, he wasn't here for that meeting, so he didn't hear that conversation. I mean, I think the whole reason why I got on the board, one of them was just to, you know, on the budget ends, as we've seen the budget's, you know, high, low, one year we're deficit, next year, you know, and it's a great learning process because there's a lot of complicated factors in that that I really control this level right. um, that we're up against. But, but again, the better bell curve that we can have, the, you know, better for everybody, and especially what we're going through right now. I mean, to play devil's advocate, I, I would I would say as a taxpayer in Bethel, 
I would expect the three or four cent increase this year, just based upon what I'm seeing for budgets everywhere. Uh, so to see a half a cent, I mean, that's great for my pocket, but I kind of worry about longer term. Are you going to ask for six cents next year? You know what I mean? So no, the we, board we talked to about have that these things, at so. last meeting. I mean, you could increase your tax rate, and you could take this two hundred thousand dollars in revenue we're giving back to the taxpayer out for the initial survey. Right. Yeah, that's what I brought up last time. And the board felt like based on inflation and things. I know people are hurting, but it's also, you know, if you want to send messages to higher ups on that people are hurting, the only way they see that is with budgets. You know, like if we pass a budget that is a half a cent, people in Bethel are going to be happy, right? But we don't know if that's going to be next year. You know, it's kind of like the days of, you know, some of the school budgets got voted down to send a message. To I'm not saying that we're sending a message to Montpelier, but the thing is, is, a lot of the reasons why we're in this position is because of people that are making decisions. And, and if we don't send a message, uh, the decisions are being made correctly. And I don't think everybody feels that way. But, uh, but I just worry, you know, the long term, not the short term. Yeah, I, mean, I think the issue if we're sending a message this year, though, like the decision that they made, which was to have a high yield, is beneficial for us. Sure. So, yep. you know, but anyway, I want to encourage that. And if we push up Bethel, it's going to push up Royalton, which is already at 3%. So, three cents. Three cents, sorry. So, you're right. So that's, push not, up that's not going to be fucking enough. No, I've, you know, I, I have brought <clears> this up last time. And we kind of discussed it and decided to not go that route this time. No, that's fine. So, but no, I, I hear hear what you're saying about you know that having a lower rate this year, meaning that there's potentially a higher rate. Well, I know just in, in, for instance, in the town of Bethel, anyways, we've gotten used to for a certain level of services that there will be certain levels of increase that go along with that. So. Yeah. Know, people are expected to see a two or three cent a year increase to, to retain those services based upon inflation and different things that are I going think on. The, the yeah. most, the more difficult thing, though, is remember, and funding the state is one big pot in Montpelier. Mm -hmm. And so, as a town, you can really control that. The tax rate locally is really hard for us to dial in in a certain area. Meaning, if right now they weren't giving back. The money that they decided to do in the endpoint surplus in the U, you would be looking at a significant increase in taxes coupled with the CMS. And, and that's, that's kind of where my but, point is. But, but we that. can't adjust our budget enough, Chris, to make up that difference. We're talking about 12 cents. No, no, and I under, I'm, again, it's just great to have the conversation. That is exactly my fear. What you just brought up there is had they not have done this, mm -hmm. we would be in this position. And I think it's easier. I, I know it's difficult because. The easy button is to say everybody can afford this and we're going to keep the level of education that we have. But had this not come through, we would be looking at having to do something, right? Right? I mean, well, this I year. mean, that's why we and, talk about it since October, right? Like, what is the program that you want to have? We're never going to know what the yield's going to be or the CLA until December. Right. So that's what's really difficult around the budget process, right? right. So I think. My goal is we every year do zero based budgeting so that we really come to the board and say, these are the positions that we need in order to do the programming that you currently offer in order to improve the programming. And it's also an opportunity for the board to say, you know, I'm feeling like we, we are overstaffed in this area. And that's when to give that direction, right? Because trying to adjust once they release all their data in December is really hard. It's really late in the game. And I think a lot of our job is education. You know, like making sure people understand that you know, we're doing the best we can to you know, take taxes into consideration, but also provide the services that we that the students need. And then, you know, we have to like once the CLA adjusts. Like that'll knock the tax rate down a whole bunch and it's not anything that we've done it's just because of the numbers and you know it's not actually changing the amount you wind up paying because your home is valued more 
And we just need to make sure that people understand that so that they don't just look at that, you know, tax rate and see a number and a change and take that into consideration. You know, like pretty, that's why we really go into like how it's calculated and how we wound up where we are. And you know, one of the things we can do this year is say we we tried to keep the tax or we purposely kept the tax rate down this year. We're anticipating this will lead to a higher jump in taxes last year, but this means that you paid less taxes overall between the two years. You know what I mean? And even though there's probably going to be a big jump next year between the two years, we could have paid that jump less, but you would have been paying more this year. What Peggy said last time was I'd rather keep the pocket the money in my pocket this year and pay that and and we just need to explain that that we're letting you keep the money in your pocket we're not going to take it this year but we're, we're a little concerned about next year uh like i said you know when it gets down to nuts and bolts of features and programming and stuff i've been just soaking it up with sponge but an over level budget and, and you know i know some people you know frown at me but i've been in budgets for a long period of time um i have you know my daily life is working with 100 million dollars year budget so this is easy to do but i'm just the whole point you know some yeah. of the things that we just discussed is exactly the concern that i have right. not i'm not saying let's change this or this program what i'm saying is had the money not come through we would have been in a really tough situation let's say the money doesn't come through next year plus the state has to change things like equalize pupils and things like that because you know funding is tight which is likely to happen then we're in an even larger jump. And I think it goes back to, yes, I'd like to keep all the money in my pocket that I can, but I can't I can't budget my life here one year and here the next and then the next one, right? And, and it's difficult to budget your schools that way too, right? Because one year you're you're living high and the next year you're trying to figure out where you're buying books. So, and we've seen that in Bethel and Royal and over, at least in Bethel in my time, we've seen that many, many times before you got here, you know? Right. Well, I mean, I think the best that we can do is do the budgets that we think is appropriate. And I would have a hard time saying that there's any, you know, we should have less resources. No, uh, I you know. So, you know, we do the best we can and then we educate. And we've also, we have planned, you know, by putting aside some of the surplus money and doing ESSER the way that we did it, we've been planning for that sort of eventuality so that we'll be able to have some money set aside or you know, offset future budgets. Now, I think we've done what we can on that. I mean, I would think, you know, overall the tax, you know, if this, this is approved here, I think people would be very happy with this. Yeah. But the concern is the future. Mm -hmm. Future is the concern. Um, well, if there's nothing else, um, I'd entertain a motion on the current draft of the budget. Yes, please. Good. Motion made to approve the 2023-2024 budget in the amount of twelve million nine hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars. So moved. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Tara, can you type that into the chat? <laughs> I'm not in the Google Meet. Do you oh, okay. Never mind. I can no. have use Ray's computer. Sorry. Right. Group and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Why? Any opposed? Okay. The budget has passed. So we'll move on to the annual warning discussion. So um, are we able to show the annual warning yeah. here? It's, um, so the legal voters of the White River Unified District consisting of the towns of Bethel and Royalton are hereby notified and warned to meet at the Royalton campus of the White River Unified District in Royalton, Vermont on March 6, 2023 at 6 p.m. to consider and act upon the following articles 1 through 12 and to discuss the article to be voted upon by Australian ballot, Article 13 only. Article 1 
is to elect a moderator who shall assume office immediately and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor. Article two, to elect a school district clerk who shall assume office July 1st, 2023 and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor, and Pam Brown has agreed to do it another year for you. Yeah, to elect a school district treasurer who shall assume office July 1st, 2023 and serve a one-year term or until the election and qualification of a successor, and Pam Brown has agreed to continue to be your treasurer. Article four, to hear and act upon the reports of the school district officers. So this is where the presentation will happen. And we'll do the slides like we've done the last couple of years. Right. Article five is to fix the salaries in the amount of $600 per member for the school district officers for the 2023-2024 school year. Article six, to fix the salary in the amount of $1,200 for the school district treasurer for the 2023-2024 school year. Article seven, shall the voters authorize the school board to borrow money by issuance of notes not in excess of anticipated revenue for the fiscal year July 1, 2023 through July 30th, 2024. So that's your tax anticipation note that we get in order to um, pay the payroll and bills until the tax revenue comes in September, December, and April. Article 8, this is your budget article. Shall the voters of the school district approve the school board to expend $12,968,515, which is the amount the school board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $20,580.66 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 6.13% higher than spending for the current year. Article nine, shall the voters authorize the school board to establish a White River Unified District Capital Improvements and Maintenance of Facilities Fund. Article 10, Shall the voters authorize the school board to transfer part of the audited fund balance existing on June 30th, 2022, estimated to total $795,605 and an amount not to exceed $700,000 to the White River Unified District Capital Improvements and Maintenance of Facilities Fund. Then Article 11, to transact any other business which may legally come before this meeting. Article 12, to adjourn the meeting until 8 a.m. March 7th, 2023, when voting by Australian ballot shall commence. And then for the purpose of voting by Australian ballot, voters of the town of Bethel will vote at the Bethel Elementary School at 273 Pleasant Street, Bethel, Vermont. The polls will open on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 at 8 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. Voters of the town of Royalton will vote at the Royalton campus of White River Valley School at 223 South Windsor Street, South Royalton, Vermont. The polls will open on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 at 8 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. The legal voters of the White River Unified District are further notified that voter qualification and registration relative to cell meeting shall be as provided in section 706U of Title 16 in chapters 43, 51, and 55 of Title 17, Vermont statutes anointed. Upon closing of the polls, the ballot boxes will be sealed, transported to, and reopened at the superintendent's office in the town of Royalton, where the ballots will be commingled and publicly counted by representatives of the Board of Civil Authority of the towns of Bethel and Royalton under the supervision of clerk of the White River Unified School District. To be voted on by Australian ballot on Tuesday, March 7th, Article 13, to elect directors to the White River Unified School District as follows. Royalton, one director for a three-year term. Royalton, one director for the remaining two years of a three-year term. Bethel, one director for a three-year term and Bethel, one director for the remaining one year of a three-year term. Don't forget, 
the deadline is the 31st to get your candidate forms in to Pam or to Carmen. I do have a typo on there, so I'm going to fix this. Title is spelt wrong in that last one. Okay. So if you want to approve the warning as read, yeah, and I'll take out location. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Um, Candidate-wise, just make sure you have your candidate stuff in by Monday the 30th. Because it's six Mondays prior to... Right, oh, sorry. Day. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Hope you miss it by a day. Yep, sorry. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Which can happen. So. so I had a few questions in regards... Well, one question in regards to the warning as it stands, and I had a couple of questions in general for maybe think about for... Why don't we future. make a motion so that we can do it as read? Okay. And then we can do discussion on the motion, if that's all right. Unless you think that. Well, it's not all on the motion, but that's. But okay. It could potentially be all on. I don't know. But through this whole process, right. I've identified okay. some things that do don't read. seem to line up with the, right. Right. the article's origination. So going through the candidacy piece of it, so you know, looking at the article's origination when we tied the schools together. Yeah. So some of the things that don't seem to jive is, so for one, the Canada has to get signatures from their given town. Mm -hmm. So 1% of the voting population in Bethel or, or Burlton. So no Burlton person can sign the Bethel form, no Bethel person can sign the Burlton form. However, um, that, however, you do vote on that person in both towns. Right. So, you know, Burlton votes for Bethel and vice versa. So it seems a little odd that you, you can't put your you know, I had words with people like, can I sign your form? I'm like, no, you can't sign my form. Well, isn't the same? I'm like, no, it's not. But the other thing, too, is then if you're a writing campaign like I found out last year or this year, if you're writing campaign, then you have to get 1% um, of each town. So, yeah. like, both towns together. Both towns. yeah, so, so yeah. the article's origination yeah. is a lot of this. Well, I think not, this is how it was set up in the beginning. Yeah, I, mean, I think this, there's the nomination process, which is separate from the voting process. Yes. And the voting is from both both towns, and the nomination process is you're nominated from your town. So, which kind of makes sense because you know you're representing you're representing that town for the whole district and voted on by the whole district. So, I, don't yeah, I don't know. They just thought sure it would make more sense if you know, Duffel's representation was voted by Duffel and Rolton by Rolton's and why that was very would... clearly debated uh, at length um, when the before the merger and it was felt that Bethel folks um, and Royalton folks wanted the opportunity to vote on all of the members of the board. Well, I mean, again, that was X amount of years ago. It's always good to open up to, sure. to, to look at other things. The, the other thing, just kind of looking through the whole thing too, is, you know, um, it, you know, earlier days, you know, we used to do the budget in May, so we school vote. May because by that time you had the accurate data from the state on exactly where your budget stands. Um, where right now we, you know, we have numbers that could change between now and then, one or the other. Um, and I know some of the arguments in the past has been, you know, if we had it in May and it gets voted down, then what happens in June? But you can, st the school doesn't shut down. You continue to operate on eighty percent of your current, um, your current budget that you're in so I, I don't know just you know yeah maybe I mean, something to think of, of ways. it just seems like you know we're just we're playing in the dark you know we're you know this is what we think but it hasn't been confirmed you know and it can go one way or the other it can help us right or it could hurt us you know that kind of thing so I'm just those are some of the things that that I was thinking about um I will say these you know it was very nice having our budget all set and Put to bed when we were reading the articles about some of the other towns. <laughs> oh yeah, go through things. You know. And then just in regards to this warning here, so I just had some questions. So the in regards to the um, district clerk, so I see that there's no salary for the clerk, but there is for the, the treasurer. Is that, that that never happens? Okay. And then as far as the um, the um, directors, because uh, this was kind of a bit of a um, bring around the rosy the other day trying to figure out what seat is what seat <laughs> so would it be helpful to put like you know term expires 2024 or 26 because this year for instance there was some confusion with 
like the two Bethel seats and and which ones those were, or who was in what seat or what seat was. So, I mean, I, I know a lot of times there's towns will put the the expiration of that term on the warning so that it's easier for the town clerk to figure out which seats or what. Well. Questions that I have. So we want to adjust that and add the term expiration. Is there a reason not to, uh, language wise? Would you be able to do that while you fix your typo? Yeah. Do you want me to put this? I think that might be on it. I'm happy to do that. I know I got a couple of emails um, from so, from Christy trying to figure out who was in. Yes, seat. we we your seat was our problem seat. We couldn't because yeah. like when you went from Bethel to Royalton yeah. and like trying yeah. to remember Let's which was what. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Royalton one director for a three year term. I'm going to put in parentheses expires 2026. One director for the remaining two years of a three-year term. So that's going to expire 2025. Oh, it goes to another line. All right. Bethel, one director for a three-year term. So that's going to expire 2026. And then one director for the remaining one year of a three-year term expires 2024. And while we're editing, Chris is actually the vice chair. <clears throat> for the clerk now? No. Oh, okay. that's right. We changed it. I thought, yes. Yeah. Uh, Andrew's serving as clerk until sure. another person. Okay. Yeah. And then Chris Jarvis is vice chair. Um, did you have any other questions? Uh, excuse me. Can, yeah, can, can you uh, tell me what years the, the uh, directors expire? In Bethel again. So on the warning, the one director for a three-year term expires 2026, and then the one director for the remaining one year of a three-year term will expire in 2024. Okay, and I expire because the term, yeah, and then the one I'm in is expires in 25. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure it was right. That was the confusion yeah. in Bethel was that Rodney had come in. Rodney had come in to finish up Lisa McCroy. Right. Mm -hmm. He'd been expired. Uh, but, then he, but then he but then he ran for a different yeah. seat. And so we were trying to figure it out. Yeah. Like, Pam's like, well, I'm gonna go talk. I <laughs> spent talk to Jamie. I I'm spent like, an hour luck. with Pam yesterday yeah. going yeah. over all of these, making sure we were okay. on the same page, and then Jamie spoke with her about staying on board as the clerk for another year. So that's good. Definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. She's great at what she does, so she's yes. definitely an asset to the team. Um, Article 9, the capital improvement funds, yep. is this going to move funds from the previous ones? No, so we would still have the two individual reserve funds for Bethel and Royalton. We can add an article to this if you want to ask the voters if you can move that money. I think that if I thought we were doing it. Yeah, I, I would. Um, and if Article 9 is not approved, what happens on Article 10? We could amend the article from the floor to put it oh, right. into the floor individual no. funds. Okay. Yep. It could become very interesting if that one. <laughs> right? But if the first one goes down, then we've got some uh, issues. There could be a lot of motions being made for different thoughts. Yes. We've had one of those meetings a few years, so yeah, we do. That's always what comes up when when uh, when you say like, "Oh, let's meet in May," and that that meeting comes back to mind. And I'm like, "Oh my god, to have to go back and like redo the budget in a hurry is never." We do vote to other districts. I know. I mean, the other thing is, it's probably nicer for them not to have all the budgets at the same time. 
We have two in May already. We have four in March. So just just so we don't get caught off guard at the meeting, so let's play that devil's advocate. So let's say Article Nine goes down. As a board, what are our thoughts in regards to Article Ten? If someone makes a motion and we want to speak on it, do we have a? Board recommend you guys just split it. That's what we did. At that point, year. do we yeah. have some sort of board recommendation of what we want to do, or that last year we split it equally into the two current reserves. And can board members make motions to amend the articles, or is it just the floor? Um, anybody can make a motion. Anyone can make a motion. I think typical practice is that the board doesn't. But the, um, well, like last year, we, we took what we were getting. Like that 700000 we split it evenly into each reserve last year. That's what the members approved. We had 350 to Royalton, 350 to Mountain. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking if, if it goes down and then all of a sudden if somebody gets up to make a motion on what they want to do with that money, you know, do we have some sort of recommendation? Your only that, options. That might steer the ship a little better. Your then. only options with capital with surplus funds is you either put it in your budget as offsetting revenue mm -hmm. to taxpayers or you have to have the taxpayers vote to put it into reserve funds. And okay. you only can use reserve funds that you have established unless someone from the floor is going to create a new reserve fund. Yeah, so if Article Eight's already been approved for that budget level, we still would just it would still go into revenue. Yeah, it would be, it would be in the future the revenue. Okay. It will it will stay in your general fund right. and it will become your future unassigned revenue. surplus yeah. in the fiscal year twenty three audit that can then be used for twenty five offsetting revenue. So if any of that goes over, it does. It just stays in your general fund and carries over from year to year if you don't. <laughs> Well, isn't there a limit on that? Don't you have to yeah. reconcile within three years of yes. yeah. deficit? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I have now added Article 10, adjusting the remaining articles. So Article 10 now reads, shall the voters authorize the school board to transfer the funds from the Royalton Building Reserve Fund and Bethel Building Reserve Fund into the White River Unified District Capital Improvements and Maintenance of Facility Funds. So Article 11 is now the transfer of the surplus. Article 12 is now to transact any other business. Article 13 becomes to adjourn to Australian ballot and the Australian ballot article now becomes Article 14. And I've changed the language in the first paragraph. Um, parentheses following articles is now one through 13. Australian ballot parentheses Article 14 only. All right. Does anybody have any other things on the annual meeting morning they want to discuss? I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the meeting morning as read and amended. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the meeting, annual meeting morning as read and amended, let's say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. Thank so, you. Peggy and Rodney, if you can come up to central office and sign the warning, um, ideally by Monday, if you can, so that we can get it to Pam and have her sign it and get it into the informational mailer. Thank you all. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Uh, on our last uh, budget approved for March. Thank you. All right. We don't have any other. So I make a, I a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll go grab that off the printer so you guys can sign it.